10.2.1 life cycle assessment. I think I said earlier in a previous video, 10.1.4 wastewater treatment was the worst taught topic. Um, I'd like to consider this is joint first or maybe close second in terms of the life cycle assessment. Again, it's new to the specification, so teachers don't really know um, um, how to teach it. We can talk about the application of it, uh, but it's a completely new concept. So just try to get your head around it. So. What do they do? Well, life cycle assessments are carried out to assess the environmental impact of products and services. And we can assess it in eight different areas. If you think about this, make sure you include some of these ideas and you're assessing the impact. You're not saying what it is. It's not, you're not talking about global warming or climate change. You're assessing the impact. You're sort of trying to measure the impact it's had. So I think of this acronym, D-U-M-P-D-O-P-E, and I just want to run through these eight areas that you could assess. So we'll start at the bottom, actually. So in terms of production and extraction, that has an impact on the environment. So therefore, that can be included in the life cycle assessment. So the production of a material and the um, extraction of the raw material in which it's going to be used. The M and the P is manufacturing and processing. So everything you use requires manufacturing, making and processing. The U and the O is the use and the operation. So the use of a product or the operation of a process um, produce, has an impact on the environment. So therefore, a life cycle assessment can be completed. And finally, the distribution and the disposal of a product can be included in a life cycle assessment. Now there's some things it's really easy to be able to quantify the use of, so for instance, water, resources, or energy, and also the production of waste. We can measure that, we can put numbers on it, we can put figures to it, and we can see what sort of impact that's having. But measuring the effect of a pollutant isn't easy to quantify. So we might say we're reducing the amount of carbon in one area, but we were increasing the carbon in other areas. Therefore, life cycle assessments require judgments. They're not, they're, they're not a, a definitive, this is definitely the, the idea behind it or what's going on. It's an assessment. It's just saying this has an impact. We need to consider the impact this has on the environment. Now, what if you just did a smaller life cycle assessment? So a selective or abbreviated life cycle assessment. That's where you include the things if you want to to make a process look bad. Just include the big areas that are causing a, an impact on the environment and ignore others. Or ignore big areas and just put small um, considerations in there. That means selected or abbreviated LCAs or life cycle assessments can be misused to reach predetermined conclusions. We talked about bias as well, where we look at the idea of, I've got an idea about what I want, what I think is going to be the best outcome, and I present evidence to make that the case. We want to get rid of that predetermined ideas or conclusions or the, uh, the imposition of bias. So you need to be able to look at that in terms of data. For instance, plastic bags and paper bags. Well, straight away you might go, well, paper bags are better for the environment uh, because they are uh, recyclable. Um, so you can recycle the paper easily. And we know plastic bags, they don't recycle very easily. And if you put them in a landfill, they fill the landfill up and they have an impact on the environment there. But we've not just got to consider what our preconceived ideas. We've got to look at data and we've got to consider those eight stages we talked about earlier. They are processing and extraction, manufacture and processing, uh, use and operation, and distribution and disposal. All of those have an impact on the environment. They have stages that have an impact on the environment. Therefore, they should be included in a life cycle assessment. Again, lots of words there for you to consider, but just break it down to this. Can you look at data and decide which of them is gonna have the best or the least impact on the environment? And can you argue in terms of different areas that might be included in a life cycle assessment? Could you spot a selective or abbreviated L life cycle assessment uh, to show that it's reached a predetermined idea? And would you be able to explain that?